Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a survival horror in Unity and welcome to episode 12. So we're going to carry on with this from the last episode and we're going to work on our gun mechanics more and start working a little bit with some AI with our zombie. So the intention of AI is basically big load of scripts, big lines of code, telling certain objects what to do at certain points. That is the general consensus of what AI can do. And we are going to get around to AI in many different ways and forms. Like I say, we're just going to touch a little on AI in this episode. So, firstly, what we will do is because we have our gun working, we have an enemy here, we need to get to a point in our game now where we can fire our gun and actually do some damage. So, to do that, we're going to head into our scripts folder and we're going to take this script right here, fire pistol, and open it up. So, all we need to do is add in a ray cast to detect how far away our shot is. Now it's not too drastically different or massively complicated and there's different ways of defining uh, say for example a long distance it's a bit harder to hit but for now we're just going to go for the basics and build from there. So what we need to do is after the is firing statement right here in the I enumerator we need to add in a couple of lines of code which will allow us to use the Raycast data and send it to a different script to actually impact itself. So we'll start by going if and in brackets physics dot Raycast and we've done Raycast before so we don't need to explain massively what's going on here. Obviously we need to uh, transform the position and direction to make sure we are going forward because that is the most important part. Make sure we are going forward with this. So transform dot position. So we're stating the position is there. That's fine. Now we need to transform the direction. So transform dot transform direction and forward. So it's vector three dot forward close bracket and then comma and we need to out shot so we're outputting to shot now we've done that before in a different script shot is going to be the variable and i like to keep things consistent when i'm coding so we've used the same variable here in this script and in a different script but they never ever see each other so it, they're both irrelevant technically and we'll open curly bracket and then we will set the um shot up here so we'll have it as simply ray cast hit shot semicolon it's there our shot here gets rid of that little jagged red underline. So now what we need to do is we need to add in a new variable because we'll need the target distance again. So underneath our variables at the very top, let's add in target distance. So public float and target distance semicolon. You probably guess what's going to happen here. We make target distance equal to shot dot distance semicolon. Now at this point what we have to do is send some information to another script. Now the best way to kind of get around this is to send a message as it were to kind of start another method in a separate script. And this script doesn't actually exist yet because we haven't written it, but we're going to kind of future proof for the next 10 minutes. So we're going to go shot dot transform dot send message. And in brackets, what we need to do is let's find the message we want to send. So we're damaging the zombie here. So that'll be the message that we send damage zombie and that's in quotes comma and we're going to have this name let's call it something that we can relate to so it's an amount so let's have it damage amount so this is the variable we're kind of sending as well 
and because this is actually a variable itself, we need to declare it at the top. So public, and I'm going to have this one as an integer. So int and uh, damage amount, and by default, I'm going to make it equal to five semicolon. You'll see now that that means damage amount is a valid variable in this line. And because we don't need to receive anything back into this script from that other script, we can have send message options dot don't require receiver. Close bracket. And semicolon. Not sure why it's defaulted a. Huh. There we go. That should be right. Save. Not sure why it put an extra um, bracket at the end there. But if we head back to Unity, we should hopefully see that we have no errors. Excellent. So <clears throat> now we can move on. So now we need to create a script which will allow us to stick it onto the zombie for the zombie to receive this damage. So I'm going to right click create C sharp script and let's have this called zombie death. Now I think before we actually write this script there's a couple of things we have to set up in place to make sure this is going to work. So if we start by going to our zombie folder, going to the model and let's get it death animation because this is where the little bit of UI comes in. We need the zombie to recognize that it has received enough damage to then die. So let's have this one back fall. So let's take that animation, hold control, press D to duplicate and drag it out of the prefab. And we need to go to our debug menu and click legacy back to normal. And wrap mode, we want just once. We don't want this animation to keep looping itself because the zombie will just keep dying over and over and over. We only want it to play the once. So at that point, let's add that animation to our animation component on the zombie. So size is equal to two. Element zero is walk, which means element two is going to be back fall. At the same time, we then need to add a box collider to the zombie itself. So let's tick our zombie active so we can see him. And let's zoom in a little so we can see him. And now we need to go to add component, physics, and box collider. You'll see, if you're using this model at least, that the box collider isn't necessarily the best at detecting where the object is. So we just need to kind of shift it up and move it into the correct place. So let's move it upwards. Let's extend it a little. Uh, 1.4 maybe. Yep, that looks pretty much it. Uh, we need to shrink it a touch, so 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and let's shift the center to about there. Now that should roughly surround our zombie, so we should be able to detect anything we throw at it. You can take much more time than I have here. I've just done this for convenience sake, just because I need to speed things up along. I don't want to waste too much time here. So. Next thing, let's go to that script that we created, which is here, and the zombie death. So let's open up that script. Now, there are a couple of variables we need to state and a couple of methods we need to create. Hey, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. So the first variable is going to be the enemy health itself. <clears throat> My voice went there, apologies. So public, int, and let's just call it enemy health. And I think by default for the zombie, I'm going to make it equal to 20. So because our shot is worth five hit points, our zombie is going to have to take four shots before it dies. Next is going to be the enemy itself. So public game object and the enemy. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in something called a status check. Now, the status check itself may not be necessary, but depending on what we're doing and how we're coming about with this, you know, we can actually use this status check to stop 
the uh, sequence constantly occurring. So depending on how you use your own AI scripts, you may need a status check. So public int status check semicolon. Now you could use a bool here, true or false, if you wanted to, but I may use three different statuses. We'll see what happens. So firstly, what we need to do is rather than do void update, we need to do the dom uh, sorry, damage zombie method that we created in our other script, which is this one, damage zombie. So void damage zombie. And in brackets, we need to define int and that damage amount, which is the one we stated in the other script, if you remember. So within this script, all we need to do is have the enemy health and then take away the damage amount. So minus equals damage amount, semicolon. So every time we fire at the zombie now, it's going to take away this amount. So to work with that, we need to have some lines of code which say, oh, we've received enough damage, let's die. So we need to have if, and in brackets, enemy health is less than or equal to zero. And rather than nest these if statements, because we also need to make sure our status check is equal to zero. So rather than have another if statement below, we can use the two ampersands. So and status check equals zero. Close bracket, open curly bracket. At this point, let's change the status check. So status check equals and let's have it set as two just so we can't run this if statement again it will only run the once at this point what we'll do is we will stop the walking animation on the zombie so the enemy dot get component and in spiky brackets animation open close bracket dot stop and in brackets and quotes, walk, which is that walking animation name. And then what we have to do is we have to play the death animation. So the enemy dot get component and in spiky brackets animation again. And then oh, we close bracket dot play. And it is, I believe, back fall and semicolon and save that script. Now, we will modify this a little bit later on as well because it's gonna to get to a point where the zombie could be playing its attack animation, in which case we would have to stop both walk and stop attack at the same time, just to make sure that we don't uh, do anything else to it. So for now, this script should be fine. So let's head back to Unity and check, no errors, excellent. So if you do have any problems with the scripts, head over to the website, download and assets, and you can get them there. Or you can ask in the comments below uh, if you have a problem and you need some help. So let's drag and drop this zombie death onto our zombie. And then we just need to set the enemy, so the zombie itself, onto there. And let's turn it off up here. And now let's test all of this out. So hopefully if we go on the M9, we have the fire pistol, we have the target distance up here, the damage amount up here. So everything should work as intended. Hopefully, hopefully anyway. So if you remember, we go through here, pick up the weapon that's over there. If I can actually get my aim correct. And then if we head here, and there we go. So that music is way, way, way too loud. I, I think I meant to change it at some point, but I think I do need to turn that down a bit. I realize it's a jump scare, but it's making me jump every time. So I'm gonna put it as 0 0.3 for now. <clears throat> uh, one thing I did notice as well, the jump trigger. Uh, we need to turn the mesh renderer off that, just so as it doesn't look a bit 
silly when we walk into it and we expect something to happen. So now, hopefully, this whole sequence that we have set up should be just fine. So it's always good to play test as much as you need to because you know many many things could always go wrong and they always do usually for me. And there we go. Our zombie has died. So next episode what we're going to look at is we will sort out our zombie being able to walk towards us. Uh, we'll look at ammo for our gun. And I think we should probably stop that music from playing when the zombie's dead because we've been scared enough. Uh, we may also start looking at some health as well. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.